trying to pull like a Bob, Barb, Bob Barker at the end and be like, <laughs> stay in your pets, guys. Hi guys, hang tight. We're just going to hold on a few minutes and wait for some more people to join in. And then we will be starting shortly. You're doing great. Please, <laughs> Please you know what to do with my hands <laughs> Like I said, guys, just hang tight. We're going to wait a few minutes to let some more people join in, and then we will start in a little bit. I feel like I need to get you a stand. <laughs> can I even pull my part-time comedian and start telling jokes? <laughs> Stand-up comedy? <laughs> All right, guys, we'll go ahead and get started. We are here with Officer Windsor to celebrate Animal Care and Control Appreciation Week. She's going to take it away. If you have any general questions about anything that she discusses, feel free to throw them in the comments. If you can hear us, please go ahead and give us a thumbs up in the comments so we know that we are good to go. Thumbs up if you can hear us. Perfect. All right, you're good thumbs to up. go. Yes, oh we got gosh, some thumbs up. <laughs> All righty, hey guys, I'm Officer Windsor. I am one of the Monroe County Sheriff's Office Animal Management Division, Animal Com Management Officers, whatever you want to call me. Um, I, like I said, work for Monroe County, so I work outside of the city of Bloomington jurisdiction um, for the city of Bloomington. They have three animal control officers that work for the city of Bloomington through the Bloomington Animal Shelter. Um, like I said, I'm Officer Windsor. I've been with the department for three and a half-ish years, I think. Um, I, previous to that, worked in a different county, saw the opportunity to come up to Monroe County to work with some animals, and thought that would be an awesome job. Um, once I came up here, we, as animal control officers, do go through some, some training. Um, there is no state regulated training that we have to go through to be animal control officers. So it's just kind of whatever our department can send us to, which for us, the more the better. Um, so I have been to, through Code 3, um, which is affiliated with Colorado State University, a bunch of their training. So I am currently a... Um, certified Animal Cruelty Investigator through Code 3, like I said, affiliated through Colorado State University. And as of the end of next month, I will be um, a Certified Equine Cruelty Investigator. I am also a Certified in Chemical Immobilization, so Tranquilizing Animals. Um, a couple of our officers are Certified in um, Euthanasia to do it out in the field. Um, I'm Certified in pet CPR and pet first aid, as well as human and child CPR and first aid. Um, so I was told to kind of just give you guys a rundown of how we do things um, for Monroe County, kind of what our daily stuff looks like. Um, so pardon me while I look down here at my notes. Um, so typical days for us kind of look like patrolling Monroe County. You'll see us out, we drive these big giant vehicles um, kind of hard to miss because they say sheriff on the side of them. You'll notice in the little writing below it says animal management. Um, so we deal with everything within Monroe County outside of the city of Bloomington jurisdiction that has to do with animals. So that includes what is not limited to dogs running at large, cats running at large, livestock running at large, uh, wildlife in people's houses, people getting bit by animals, um, we have breeding facilities and boarding facilities that we have to inspect and permit every year. Um, and we do a lot of general education as far as what our animal ordinances look like. Um, I did bring my trusty, well-used copy here with me. It is currently 18 pages long and we are in the process of kind of doing a rewrite um, with our county legal department to submit that to our commissioners to kind of get them 
I don't want to use the term revamped, but they haven't been updated since 2014. So we're working on it just to get things um, a little more polished. Um, so I wanted to cover a couple of our basic ordinances in here. Um, like I said, it's 18 pages long. I'm not going to sit here and read all 18 pages. Um, if you want to look it up, it's pretty easy. Go to Google, type in Monroe County Ordinance. It is chapter 440, if you want to see it there at the top. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> um, this is the one that defines like what we can issue citations off of. We also have chapter 441. That deals more with our breeding and boarding facilities and what they're required to do and how they get their permit and all of that fun stuff. But um, within our ordinance, we have uh, different sections. The biggest ones that we tend to use are going to be um, that first section. It's the definition. So it defines what an at-large animal is. It defines what a public nuisance is. It defines what breeders are and all of that fun stuff, which are the main ones that we use. Um, you get down into it a little bit more, you get chapter 440-7. That's going to be our public nuisance. That one and at large are the two that we seem to use the most or do the most with. Um, public nuisance is anything from dogs barking, which um, there's a certain amount of time and certain things that we have to do to be able to prove that, to owners not picking up their dog's waste if it is not on their own property. Um, dogs that bite, they can be considered public nuisances. Um, it is something that we do right ordinance citations on and then let's see we go down to a couple more 440-10 rabies vaccination that is uh, the biggest one that we use I would say any call that we go to that has a dog a cat or a ferret I don't know why they add ferret in there but they do um, are required by the state of Indiana and our county ordinance to be vaccinated against rabies anything over the age of three months um, and it's also in our Indiana Criminal Code, because if you have a dog over the age of three, three months, bites someone causing injury, it is a misdemeanor in the state of Indiana. So um, always a good idea to rabies vaccinate your pet, because I can write you a ticket on it. I don't like to, but I do. But this awesome organization that's having me stand here and talk has a clinic. She wanted me to touch on MCHA a little bit. We have a clinic here in Monroe County. They are, um, they're the ones that have the licensed veterinarians on staff, which is a requirement in the state of Indiana to be able to administer that vaccination. Um, so you can head on over to them or jump on the Instagram page, because I'm sure it's on there, um, or the Facebook page, or just give them a phone call or I don't know, Google them or something. Make sure you get your pet vaccinated. Uh, we jumped down a couple bit. Whew. A couple more and we hit at, at large dog we don't see it as much in cats um, because our rules are a little more lenient as far as cats um, but at large dogs so a dog that is not contained to its property so I can have a hundred acres and if, as long as my dog stays within those hundred acres we're good it's once the dog steps off of my property and is not on any sort of leash or under some sort of control it would be considered at large um, so that's kind of one of the bigger ones that we get a phone call on. And then, let's see, cut, cut down a couple more. And then we get into our animal care, so that's where our welfare checks come in. Um, during the winter, we get a lot of phone calls of dogs outside without shelter. They have frozen water. Um, during the summer, whenever it's hot, we get the dogs in cars. We get just animals without water. Um, that's where our animal care comes in. It talks a lot in it as well about tethering. Um, we have quite a few within that 440-17 that tells us what we can and can't do as far as tethering our dog. So if you have an outside dog and it's on a tether, you may want to jump over there and read those rules to make sure that we fall within that. Um, let's see. I brought some equipment here with me um, just to give you guys something a little more to look at um, because standing here or sitting there, watching someone stand here and talk can kind of be boring. So a um, couple of things that I tend to use every day. Um, I would say most animal control officers use it every day. Um, treats, who doesn't like um, chicken livered flavored treats? Uh, dogs, especially, they don't think I've ever tried to throw a cat a treat, but who knows. 
um, tend to like the more smelly, the softer treats, um, your hard treats like your milk bones and all of that fun stuff don't tend to smell as good or as appetizing and they don't tend to come running for them. But if you shake a, shake a treat, you tend to get someone's attention. Um, this one looks a little different. I was rolling it up here at the beginning because it's super long, but I'll go ahead and unroll it. Um, we use leashes every day. We use slip leashes just because that's the easiest thing for us to use. Um, it's kind of a universal one size fits all. Um, this one is actually called a cowboy rope. So slip lead, put it through the loop. You can fit anything from, I would say this would be a bit overkill, a chihuahua up to, I don't know, Great Dane, Great Pyrenees, whatever floats your boat. Um, you can also use these, the big long ones, um, for if we get horses out, we can use them as temporary or makeshift halter. Um, and yeah, I use it all the time. I usually have one in my pants pocket, one in my door, well, each door of my vehicle. Um, got them hanging on the back of my seat, got them in the bed of the truck, a little bit of everything. I use it all the time. Um, next up, the well-loved and probably don't smell the greatest bite gloves. Um, we use them Typically, anytime we go up to an animal um, that we don't know or doesn't seem to be the happiest of animals, um, which is completely understandable, animals get out. They don't know their surroundings always, so they get a little on the nervous side. We tend to see more dogs bite um, that are nervous than actually aggressive um, because dogs tend to use biting as their first line of defense, whereas, excuse me, if you go up to a cat, their first line of defense is going to be scratching, so that's why you see more cat scratches and then they go to biting whereas dogs typically try to run and then they bite um so we use them a lot they come in different sizes it should be a hand model um so use those they're usually in the opposite pocket from my leash um i don't know a call that i haven't gotten out with them at least in my pocket um because you never know what you're going to get into um let's see let's just go right down the line Crates, we have different sizes. I hope this one is clean. I don't think I've used it recently. Um, this one, we put anything from a cat to, I've put rabbits. Um, I think one of my coworkers put a snake inside one one time, um, which we'll get to snakes here in just a minute. Uh, we go any from this size, there's medium sized ones, and then we have large ones that we put typically our large breed dogs in or just dogs in general. Um, Kind of keep everyone safe if we have to transport them to fit in the back of our trucks kind of just keeps things nice and organized and kind of makes it easier if we do have a, a slightly aggressive dog we can use our control stick which you'll see here in just a minute to put the dog into the crate um, and then it just kind of keeps everyone safe rather than trying to actually put your hands on the animal and pick it up to put it in the vehicle so this right over here um, so bouncing off that we have the control stick we have different sizes and we have different ones. Um, this is the one that I just tend to use the most. Pull this long line out. Um, so this is gonna be the release end. On the other end here, we like to call them necklaces. So if you wanna be nice and friendly, you can walk up to a dog and say, hey dog, I'm gonna put this nice pretty necklace on you and um, the loop gets smaller and bigger. Let's see if I can do it without hurting myself. Um, so that's as big as this one gets. Uh, you go up, you put it around the dog's neck, um, you pull this line right here. Once you pull it, it makes it smaller. Um, this is a really good tool if you have a dog that is kind of backed into a corner that doesn't seem to be the happiest. Um, I've used it to get dogs that have been in car wrecks out. Um, they tend to be a little more freaked out, uh, not happy because either they're injured, their owner's injured, and they're being protective. It's just the safest way to get a dog I would say that isn't the happiest or wanting to be on a leash um what we see a lot with catch poles sorry I went blank for a minute is that once you get on it and actually tighten it dogs will do what we call an alligator roll so if you've ever watched I don't know, any of those shows that have like crocodile dundee or whatever the um once they you know get a rope around it the alligator just starts rolling and kind of winds themselves up in the rope Dogs will do that too, and it sounds absolutely terrible. I promise we are not hurting them. We are doing 
Um, what's safest for us and generally what's safest for the animal and the general public um, just because like I said earlier scared dogs tend to bite more um, and nobody likes getting bit um, so we use control sticks like I said we are not hurting them uh, we do it to try to keep us safe and the public safe as well as the animal um, and we can also use it as kind of like a, a way to lead it um, because this is strong it's not really going to break um, I do believe this one expands to be a little bit longer and a little bit shorter. Um, they do have big ones. They get up to like 15 and 20 feet long. Um, I tend to go with the shorter one and keep the shorter one on me. Let me just put that together real quick. All right. Uh, next up, a couple of things. We use them for, well, I tend, I tend to use this one a lot less. Um, Fun fact about the old wonderful Officer Windsor, I don't like snakes. Um, so if you wanna call and you say you have a snake in your house, which is the only time we typically come out to do any type of removal of any type of wildlife, is when it is actually inside of your living quarters um, around people. We'll bring something like this for a snake. You kinda just use it, pick it up. You can carry it around. Sometimes we have um, pillowcases with us to put them in. We have buckets as well that have holes um, and a lid just for safe removal and transportation um, to and from where it's being picked up and being released. Um, on the other side of that, you can use this. Um, I wouldn't, I try not to use this a lot just because this is metal. It doesn't have any type of um, coating or anything on it. So using it on snakes um, can not always be the greatest just because if you pinch too hard, you can hurt the snake. Um, there also, can be used as cat tongs. Um, again, doesn't have any coating on it, so we try not to use it a whole lot. Um, I have short arms, so I tend to use it more to just get stuff in the back of my truck than actually to use it on animals. Um, but kind of like those grabbers that you see on TV where you gotta get something on the top cabinet and you don't, um, you're not tall enough or you don't have long enough arms. Um, so we use that a lot. Um, let's see. This, um, most people know this as a like raccoon trap or they use them for possums or I don't know why you would want to trap a skunk because they stink, but some people do. Um, we typically use this for feral cats. Um, within Monroe County, we do have uh, quite a few feral cat colonies. We use it to um, safely capture, trap, capture cats that are under socialized or don't really like human contact. Um, we're able to contain them. Uh, one side opens, you put food in, you close the door. Some of them look different, so this end always doesn't look the same. Then you have a door on this end that you can set. Maybe. This one isn't as loud. So you have your food on one end, your um, open door on the other, the animal will walk in. I don't know if I have, there Animal will walk in. And once they get to the food and they step on the plate, the door closes, the animal is now contained, um, gives us the ability to go up and kind of safely handle it um, without actually having to touch the animal. Like I said, we use it a lot um, to do some trap, neuter, and release for cats. We do. Um, since we work out in the county, we tend to catch a lot of wildlife while doing that. Um, so if we catch wildlife, we just release it um, because we don't remove, we don't do any removal of wildlife from property. Um, I did not bring a couple of things in just because they were big and um, I already had quite a few things. We have these really, really big nets that we can use to catch cats or I've never really caught a dog in it, but I'm sure you could. Um, we've caught domestic bunnies that someone had turned loose um, and you just needed those few extra feet to be able to contain that animal. Um, I caught a injured vulture in it one time so that we could transport it. Um, we also have snow fencing so that, um, it's like this tall, it's orange, neon orange. Um, we actually, by we, I mean myself and the other animal control officers went through a Make sure you get the name right. The large animal rescue um, and basic animal sheltering through code three. Um, it taught us a lot about 
if we were to have some type of um, kind of mass incident to where we needed some temporary fencing, um, you can roll it up. It's easy to transport, um, pretty easy to get anywhere. Um, we learned how to kind of corral and keep contained cattle. Um, you can use it for, we've used it on dogs, you can use it on goats, you can use it on pigs, um, you can use it on just about everything. Um, it's really good, like I said, if there was some type of mass incident where someone's fence got down and we needed to corral them. Um, the biggest thing is now that we have I-69 going through Monroe County, um, if we were to have any type of tractor trailer incident that had any type of animal on it, we could use it um, to corral and contain the animals. Um, let's see. We actually have a stretcher um, to pick up and... Did I already talk about the stretcher? Mm -hmm. Okay. It went out of order. Um, it's kind of like a human stretcher, but it doesn't lift up or down. It does have wheels on one end of it, um, and then it has like a blanket looking thing um, that buckles on one side. Um, you can put an animal on it to carry it like a stretcher. Like I said, it has wheels so one person could drag it. Um, let's see. Oh, one more thing back here on the traps. Um, we have this size, which I said most people would use for like possums or raccoons or skunks or cats. Um, we actually do have a bigger version. It would probably stand every bit of this tall. We use those for dogs that we don't typically we don't typically use it a whole lot for dog, but for dogs um, that are loose and don't want to be caught, um, I've had really good luck catching dogs in it. Um, but it's a little bit heavier and a lot bigger, so I did not want to carry it in. Um, do we have any questions so far? We do not have any yet, but if anyone has any general questions about anything that Officer Windsor has discussed, feel free to throw them in the comments. I think she has a couple stories she could tell us while we wait for some questions. <laughs> I'm trying to think of some good ones. Um, as exciting as it is, um, our day-to-days tend to kind of be the same with the Trolley County. We do education. Um, I think some of my, we'll go with my favorite stories because you know, those are always the good ones. Um, one of my favorite stories, because I had no idea that we had them. Um, I think it was the second call that I ever went to um, while being animal control. Someone said that they had some kind of type of critter that got in their house. Well, it was a critter. It was in his daughter's bedroom. And so I knew what a sugar glider was. People have them as pets, right? Um, so we're chasing this critter that I swore was a sugar glider um, around this person's child's bedroom. We finally catch it and we get it to the animal shelter. I'm like, hey guys, we got a sugar glider. Turns out it was just a flying squirrel. We actually do have, I think they're called colonies, but don't take my word on that. Um, in Monroe County, of flying squirrels, they do look pretty identical to um, sugar gliders. They have different shaped tails and they tend to um, be a little different in sizes, but that was pretty cool. Um, I was really excited. I knew what it was. And then I got to the shelter and they're like, good joke, it's actually a wild animal. Why did you bring it here? Uh, we ended up taking it over to wild care. They said it was actually super fat and ready to go back out <laughs> and be released. Um, let's see. What else have I done that's been fun? Um, if the owner is listening, I won't say your name, but I find it really funny. Uh, just this last week that we, yeah, last week, got a phone call from someone that was driving down the road that said I was taking my kids to school and my neighbor's dog is on the roof. And I was like, okay, this is a joke, right? So I pull up in this person's driveway and their dog was sitting, sitting on the roof of their house. Um, she had no idea. I called the owner. She wasn't at home. Um, I said, your dog and your cat are currently on your roof. I pulled up. I think I scared your cat because it ran back inside, um, but it did not take the dog with it. And <laughs> we had to figure out how to get her dog off the roof. Um, it was really funny. So we do get to have fun days like that. Um, I'm trying to think. Before the video started, I was telling Miss Laura, who is behind the camera right now, 
Um, we don't deal a whole lot with the wildlife um, calls. That's typically more for DNR. The only time that we get involved is if it is inside of the living residence um, or if it's sick or injured, we do have the ability to come out and put it down. Um, but sometimes we don't always want to do that. So we do typically in the spring get a lot of baby deer calls. And so I was showing Miss Laura some pictures. We went and got a baby deer and took it up to this rehabber. She had like her little rehab station of all these little baby deer and they're super cute. Um, if you find one, leave it alone, please. Um, moms don't stay with their babies whenever they're little. That tends to attract predators. So they will put them sometimes in the weirdest places. They'll put them in your flower bed or underneath a tree or in some tall grass. They are fine. Please leave them alone. Um, and, um, but yeah, one of them, unfortunately, a couple years ago got injured and we picked it up and took it up to a rehabber. Um, let's see, I have on here my least favorite call, but I don't know what my least favorite call is. Um, While she's thinking, like we said, if you guys have any general questions about anything that she talked about, feel free to drop them in. Um, we don't want any case-specific questions, but any general questions, she's happy to answer. Um, I don't know. I think going back to our equipment makes me think of least favorite calls. Like I said earlier, I absolutely do not like snakes. Um, so if you have a snake in your house, like I said, feel free to call. I'll probably send one of the other officers because unless you just want a really good comical show because the last time I had to go uh, get a snake out of someone's house, I told them not to laugh at me because I was going to scream. And yes, I did scream. Um, the snake came after me. Not really, but... Um, did you get the snake, though? I did. <laughs> I did. I did one of those, like... <laughs> like Curious as far as away as I can. Um, I don't think I have anything else. If anyone has any questions... Um, We'll wait a few more minutes just to see if there's any questions. If not, please show your appreciation for Officer Windsor. Like we said, it is Animal Care Control Appreciation Week. So definitely comment, show her some love. And we'll oh, wait just about... Oh, we do have a question. Oh. You mentioned doing inspections on animal enclosures. I know DNR does too. What differenti differentiates which agency to contact? Ooh, that is a good question. Um, so within Monroe County, our ordinances, like I said, 441 deals more with our um, boarding and breeding facilities. As far as our inspections, we inspect breeding facilities for dogs. Um, I've never done an inspection for a cat facility, so it's mainly dogs. Um, so if you have five or more intact females over the age of six months, or you have two or more litters in any um 12 given months you are required within our ordinance to have a breeding license. There's a fee associated with it, an inspection, um, and a little bit of paperwork, but nothing major. And then we do uh, boarding facilities. So in a, any of your dog boarding facilities, so if you need someone to do daycare or you're going out of town and you have to board your dog, we inspect those facilities yearly. Um, just to make sure that you know everything's clean and good to go. We also do horse boarding facilities. Um, I'm trying to think, most we don't have too many, but we have quite a quite a few uh, board or breeding facilities, less boarding facilities, I would say. Um, so anytime someone is boarding an animal for a fee, um, is when you're required to have an inspection and a permit anything outside of that. So if you are a licensed rehabber, if you are a, um, we were talking earlier about like we have some falconers, they're required to do permits. If you have any type of wild animal that requires a state permit, um, so someone who has like a pet raccoon or a pet fox or, um, I'm trying to think, Within our county, we're not allowed to have pet bears um, or anything venomous. Um, but if we were allowed, DNR would do those inspections, whereas we do the domesticated animals. So your dog boarding, your horse boarding, your dog breeding, and those types of facilities. 
Awesome. If you guys have any more questions, drop them in the comments. If not, we'll wait just a few more seconds and then we will head out of here. In the meantime, thank you so much to Officer Windsor for sharing all of her knowledge with us. Well, thank you guys. <laughs> yeah, and if you, um, like she said earlier, if you have any case specific questions, not everything is public access or um, some cases are constantly, not constantly, are still ongoing. So, um, the public access to those isn't always available immediately, but if you do have case specific questions, you can call our office or you can call um, the sheriff's office directly and they'll get you transferred over to us and we can do um, some answers to some questions. If you have anything related to inside ugh, the city of Bloomington's jurisdiction, you can call the animal shelter um, and either talk to one of their staff or one of their three animal control officers as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Bye.